In this video, I will demonstrate how to use ServNet to combine GPS vector data with a ground EDM traverse. For this example, the survey begins by establishing a local base point for the survey through means of using a network solution such as one published by a state DOT. The rest of the survey is then essentially anchored to that local base point for all subsequent locations. The purpose of performing the survey in this manner is to eliminate the inherent error associated with a typical network solution. Prior to performing a survey such as the one in this example, make sure to enable the option to store GPS vectors in CERF-CE or CERF-PC. Okay, here's the site that we're going to establish control around. We're going to start by setting one or two base points of using RTK network solution. And realizing that this survey is going to be tied to those base points is very important to make sure that those points are located more than once. Uh, and then an average performed or at least a check. Um, I always like to do at least two so you have two checks in case you do get a bad location on one of them. You've got another one to check and make sure that you don't start off with bad data. Uh, the base point, if it's wrong, everything else on the rest of the whole entire survey will equally be wrong. So I start by opening up a new ServNet project. I've got the dialog box open up here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go take a look at the settings. Since we are going to be using vector data, it is important to turn on the 3D model solution under a coordinate system adjustment model. Other than that, I have my regular grid projection set up and I'm using a Geoid 18 model. This, the 2D, 1D model is for ground traverses and 3D model is for vector data. Now this raw file has both combined in it, but you still use the 3D model selection to make use of that vector data. In the input files tab, Make sure that I enable include any GPS vectors and use BP records as control. So the BP record is going to base, be the base point that comes from the network itself. Uh, the total station distance units, that's going to be in US feet. And the vector files, even though it says in US feet, you will see that the vector data itself is in meters, but the rod heights and whatnot are going to be in feet. Under the processing, again, I'm going to use the number substitution string as CHK, and that's placed in the description of each point that is redundant. So for example, if point 100 and point 900 were supposed to be the same, when you locate 100, you would use a code CHK 900 and that program would then know those two are the same points. The standard errors, I'm going to leave them as my default setup. I use a five second gun. So the reading error is for the five seconds and I set the pointing error at five seconds as well. The total station errors are again the defaults for centering and uh, the control standard error is a hundredth by a hundredth and two hundredths vertically. For the GPS standard errors, there is also a cent uh, instrument centering error. So that is how well you can basically set up your receiver over the point. Now in this survey, we are using a fixed bipod on a fixed pole height of two meters. So putting this at a half of hundredth is a reasonable error as for the setup solution. If you're holding it by hand, you would probably have to increase that a bit. The vector standard error factor is expressed in terms of exponential power. So 2 to 0 is actually a factor of 1. What that means is the vector data that's in the raw file will be held without any error introduced over the top of that vector error. If you want to add some error to the vector data itself, 
then they, you would add a number here. In my practice of using this, I typically start off with zero and let and hold the vector data and see what my solution looks like. If then I, if I feel like I need to add some error to that vector data, then I would increase that number slowly. And at no point in time would I boost that up to anything more than a two to two ratio. If it gets that high, then there's probably something wrong with this, the survey itself. And I wouldn't suggest putting a real high number just to get the vector data to adjust in the network. In the adjustment tab, these are all the defaults. In the output options, I am not writing to a coordinate file to start with. I wait until the last step once I'm satisfied with the adjustment itself. I will now add a raw file, raw data file, and this is my raw file, vector EDM. And if I open that up and take a look at it, you will see the, the first thing that you're going to notice is the BP record, point, base point number 55. So again, that is the point that comes from the network itself. Then you'll see a GPS location point with a latitude and longitude and an ellipsoid elevation. And here is the vector data itself. You can see base point 55, it's measuring from two point number. And then here's your delta x, y, z, and your variance and covariance. If I scroll to the bottom of the raw file, you'll see the EDM traverse. And you can see on the foresight, point 801 has a description of CHK901, telling the program that 801 and 901 are in fact the same point. You can see the set collection that was taken, so the angles were doubled, and point 901, point 902 were located as 801, 802, etc. I close that, and like always, my first step is to do a blender detection. I reprocess the data and look for point proximity search of a tenth. We'll find any points that could be in the same location. So in case I have miscoded something, I'll find some more redundant measurements that way. I hit apply, runs through the adjustment, and now I can take a look at the error report and take a look at, there's the point aliases, 801 equals 901, etc. Then my horizontal vertical differences, angle differences. And I can scroll through the data and look at all the error that are in there. At the bottom of it is a point proximity report, which is empty. So I have all re my redundant locations included. So once I've taken the time to look through the error report and look for any bad data or bad measurements, I am ready to go ahead and process the network. If I look at my results tab, I see that I passed the chi-square test. I can look at the full main report. And here I can take a look at my adjusted grid coordinates and look at my standard errors and see that all the values are acceptable. And when I look at the statistics of the results, I can see that the chi-square test passed at seven. It needs to fall into a range of five to 26. So a seven is on the low end, which is great. The other thing I like to look at is the standard error unit of weight. All these values are lower than the value of one, which means the survey itself, all the measurements taken in the field, exceed the expectations I had when I set the standard errors. So you want to look at values around one or less. So in this case, everything, including the vector data, all falls within a value of one or less. So I'm going to accept the closure as it is. 
I can now draw this network. If I look at the, the results of the network, you can see the cyan colored lines are the vector lines. The lighter colored ones are GPS side shots. And the purple is the EDM traverse, ground traverse. This line extending out. To the left is base point number 55. That again is the base point from the network itself. And that is a control point. And 900 is the local base point. It is also a control point. So that is a very simple procedure that does not drastically increase field time, but greatly increases the local accuracy of the survey, especially vertically.